special thanks today to my grandparents for giving me the idea for today's project. Um, what we're going to be working on today is a dog waste bag holder. So I don't know about you, but I have two dogs and whenever we go for a walk, they always feel the need to do their business. So I go through so many dog poo bags. I always like to have them with me whenever we go for a walk. Today I'm going to show you how to make two different styles. One has a loop handle that can wrap around the handle of your leash. The other is a simple drawstring bag. Both styles work great to carry with you when you go on your walks. Sometimes making projects that are really small can be more challenging than making larger projects. So because these are so tiny, there are some parts that are a little challenging. The first step to making this project is to print out the free pattern that's available on my website. Once you've printed that out, you can use the bag piece of the pattern to cut out two pieces of fabric for the bag. And the bag portion is the same for both styles. If you're making the drawstring style, then you need to cut one piece of the drawstring channel from your fabric. If you choose to make the loop handle, you'll want to cut two pieces of fabric, cut it with right sides together so that you end up with mirror images. And I have fused a lightweight interfacing onto the back of the piece that I'll have on the outside of my bag. If you're making the loop handle, you also need to choose your closure. Snaps, buttons, and Velcro are all good options. I'm using plastic cam snaps on mine today. If you're making the drawstring style, you're also going to want a piece of cord for the drawstring. I have an 18 inch piece of rat tail cord here that I'm using for my drawstring. You could also use ribbon if you prefer. So let's start by assembling the bag, and this is the same for both styles. The first thing you want to do is transfer the significant markings onto your fabric pieces. So take one of your bag pieces and lay it right side down. Then take your pattern piece and align it with the side. You'll notice that there are some arrows on the side edge. This is a guide for where to start and stop sewing. So along the side edge, I'm going to do a mark at the same height as the arrow. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. And I'm going to repeat this for the other bag piece. On the bag pattern piece, you'll notice that there is a gray dot. If you're going to make the loop handle, that dot is an indicator for where to put your snap or your closure. So to make that marking, what I like to do is use a hole punch and I'll punch a hole in my pattern piece exactly on my mark. Then. On the right side of my fabric, I'll use my pattern piece to place a mark for that closure. And I just put a dot in the center of the opening. Next, Lay your bag pieces right sides together. We're going to stitch from the top of the rectangle down to our mark with a quarter inch seam allowance. And it's very important that we stop exactly on our mark if possible. Those marks will help create the opening where the bags slide through, so it's important that it matches up. So with a quarter inch seam allowance, sew from the top of the rectangle down to your mark on both sides. I've stitched down both sides of the bag pieces. Now what we're going to do is separate them into two sections. So take your fabric and gently pull it to either side so that the seam is down the center. 
align the seams. And now what we're basically going to do is create two bags, a right hand side and a left hand side. One will be the inside of the bag and one will be the outside. So first we're going to finish sewing the sides. You can see where our previous stitches left off. So it helps usually to turn it upside down. So I'm going to take the right hand side fabric and I'm going to pull it out of the way. And I'm going to sew from my mark up to the top with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to be very careful when I sew because I don't want to overlap these stitches and I also don't want to stitch any of this fabric into my seam. So I'm going to start very carefully right below these stitches and continue sewing to the end. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. I finished sewing the side seam, so these two sections are now closed along with the center section. Next, I'm going to close the bottom of the bags. So the bottom of the bags are these two straight sections here. So along this edge and along this edge, I'm going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now that the sides and the bottom are sewn, we're ready to box the corners. There are four corners that we have to box. One, two, three, four. And to box those corners, we're going to grab our fabric and pull it apart. And you pull it until the section that was cut out lays flat. Pull the fabric flat so that the seam is in the middle and make sure that the seam allowance is flat. It kind of looks like a triangle with the tip cut off. And along that cut edge, we're going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. Our corner's now been boxed. This will give the bag shape so it doesn't just lay flat. And we're going to repeat this process for the other three corners. When you're doing the corners on the inside, you're going to do the same thing. Grab your fabric and separate, pull it up gently apart. On these corners, you have two seam allowances. So make sure that both seam allowances are laying flat. So the one on the bottom should be laying flat and the one on the side should be laying flat. I've boxed all four corners on my bags and you can see it looks like two bags stuck together at the sides. So for the next step, we're going to take one bag and flip it on the outside of the other. So I'm going to grab the one that's on the right and I'm going to turn it right side out on top of the other one. And next, what we're going to do is top stitch along this area here. So you'll notice that the fabric along the folds here is a little puffy. So we're going to stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance along one side, turn, and down the other. If you like, you can press this first with the tip of your iron. Um, you can also finger press it, but you do want to make sure that your seam is all the way out. You don't want to have your stitches tucked in. And I like to make myself a guide mark for where I'm going to turn. Since this is so tiny, stitching on the machine can be a challenge. So I'm going to use my heat erase marker and I'm just going to make myself a little mark for where I want to turn. I usually turn about an eighth of an inch below the seam. And if you have a difficult time turning on your sewing machine, you can just do a straight line stop and backstitch and a straight line stop and backstitch. And that works just fine as well. 
I like to sew with the wrong side out, so I'm going to flip this so that it's wrong side out, and then I'm going to stitch. Now that we've top stitched around our opening, let's add our handle. First, let's do the loop handle. The next step, if you are doing the loop handle, is to attach your closure. So right here is my mark for my closure on my bag. If you're doing the drawstring, you can go ahead and skip this step. So I'm going to add the snap to my bag. Since I'm adding a plastic snap to my bag, the first thing I need to do is poke a hole. So I'm going to poke a hole right at my guide mark. I don't want it to be too big, just big enough for the post. If you're doing a different type of closure, um, it's fine if it extends below this mark, but you don't want it to go too far above because we'll be attaching our drawstring or our handle up in this portion and you don't want it to extend into the seam allowance. So if you're adding Velcro or something, uh, have it extend down below the mark. I'm going to take the post section of my snap and put it on the wrong side of the fabric. And then I'm going to take the snap half and set it on top. And now I'll use my pliers to attach it. Take the loop handle piece that you would like to be on the outside of the bag. This is the one that has my interfacing. And on the right side of the bag, the side without the snap, align the short straight edge. I'm going to align it right sides together with the top of my bag and I want my handle fabric to extend about a quarter of an inch beyond my other fabric. And I'm going to pin this in place. The handle is now pinned in place and it extends a quarter inch beyond each side. We're going to go and sew along this whole edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, I've stitched all the way around the edge and I'm going to pull my fabric up towards the top and I want the seam allowance to point towards the top. Once it's attached and flip up towards the top, you can finger press it in place, or if you have a small pressing tool, you can use that to press. Just take care. Make sure that you don't melt your plastic snap or your closure if it can melt. Take your second handle piece, turn it, right side down and use a ruler to mark one half inch from the bottom edge. Fold the bottom edge up to touch your line and press. Take your bag and turn it right side out. Place your second handle piece right sides together along with the first. You can gently open up this fold and pin around. We're going to sew all the way around the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. So we're not going to sew the sides yet, just along the top. Clip the curves around the handle.
turn your bag wrong side out. Place the handle pieces right sides together. Open up the seams and folds. And I'm going to stitch this section together with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to start at the top and sew down as far as you can. But take care, don't actually stitch on this fabric. Now that we've sewn that closed, we've got a ring for the top of our bag. So the next step that we want to do is we want to reinforce this little section here where the opening in the bag splits, we want it to be really strong. So I'm going to turn the bag right side out and I'm going to open this seam allowance I'm going to stitch right here just in the seam allowance. I want it to be really strong. A zigzag works great. Since my machine is a straight stitch machine and only goes straight, I'm just going to do a few rows of straight stitching right here. That seam's now been reinforced, so I'm going to flip the top of the handle up. And I'm going to use a turning tool to turn the handle. And the edge that we pressed and put place previously, I'm going to go ahead and fold that back in place. And then I'm going to tuck the edge under at the seam. Let's press the handle flat. So it's all tucked in and we have our nice handle. So now you have a couple options for finishing it. You can go ahead and you can stitch this in place on the machine. The hard part about that is that this is so narrow, it's kind of challenging to do on the machine. So I'm going to do so by hand. So I'm going to turn it wrong side out. You can use a whip stitch or a slip stitch to hold this in place. Whatever you choose, take care. Make sure that your stitches only go through the seam allowance and the binding or just one layer of the fabric. You don't want to see your stitches on the front of your pouch. Once you've finished sewing the binding in place, if you like, you can top stitch all the way around the handle. So I'm going to top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around my edges. Now that I've finished my top stitching, I'm going to go ahead and turn it right side out. And I'm going to press one more time. The last step for the loop handle version is to add the snap. So find the mark that you made using your pattern piece and add either your snap or your Velcro. And we've finished our loop handle bag. If you'd like to make the drawstring version, you construct the bottom portion of the bag just as you did before. So first, you take your drawstring channel piece and then use your pattern to mark the edges. So mark using the two guide marks on either side. On the edge without the guide marks, Draw a line a half an inch from the bottom. Fold the raw edge up to touch your line and press. 
take your bag and take the edge that's not pressed and align it with the top edge of the bag. Make sure that the fabric is right sides together. And let the drawstring channel piece extend about a quarter of an inch beyond the edge. And stitch along the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Next, gently pull the channel fabric up towards the top. You also want your seam allowance facing the top. If you like, you can press that in place. And next you're going to fold the bag so that the channel fabric is right sides together. Gently open the folds and pin. And next we're going to sew along this edge. We're going to sew from the far end down to our first mark and then we're going to leave a little gap in this 3 8 inch section and then we're going to sew from the second mark down to the end. This will give us a little channel for our drawstring. Open the seam. Where the split in our bag hits our binding, we are going to reinforce that seam allowance. So zigzag or straight stitches right in that section to help reinforce. Now that our seam's been sewn together, go ahead and pull the channel fabric up towards the top. Tuck in the raw edge as before. And then I like to push it wrong side out. And fold the folded edge down over the top. You want it to extend just to about your previous row of stitching or a bit beyond. Give it a good finger press. You can also use a pressing tool if you like. And as with the loop handle, you can sew this by machine or you can sew it in place by hand with a whip stitch or a slip stitch. I'm going to sew this one in place on the machine. So I'm going to sew close to this fold here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to do so from the right side. You'll only be able to sew a few stitches at a time since it is such a narrow opening. So take care, watch your fingers, and go slow. Double check to make sure that the binding has been stitched all the way around. Press again. Turn your bag right side out. And let's add the drawstring. Along one end of your cord, tie a knot. Place a safety pin through the knot. And slide it in through your opening. Remove the safety pin. 
and untie the knot. Take both ends of your tails, loop them together, and create a good strong knot about an inch or so from the end. And the drawstring's finished.